The ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting are incredibly popular and some believe they could be beneficial in multiple sclerosis. In fact, esteemed MS blogger Professor Gavin Giovanoni recently said that these diets should be recommended as they could be disease modifying. But is he right? Today I'm going to review the scientific evidence behind this claim and you can take a look at the references in the notes below and at the end I'll give my personal opinion. Let's have some fun. Now I should disclose that I'm potentially biased against these diets because in real life I recommend the diet in the book Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis by Professor George Jelinek and I have a separate video summarizing that diet if you want to take a look but I'll try to be as fair as possible and by the way my name is Brandon Bieber and I make videos about multiple sclerosis every Wednesday so please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications and if you find this video informative please click like. Now both the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting try to achieve the same thing which is to force your body into metabolism metabolizing fats into ketone bodies and achieving what is known as nutritional ketosis. And you do this by essentially starving your body of carbohydrates so that it doesn't have glucose and must use fatty acids for its primary source of energy. Now everyone is in nutritional ketosis at some point. It's a completely natural state. For instance, overnight you deplete your glycogen stores and you wake up in the morning in ketosis and during exercise you also deplete your glycogen stores and you're in ketosis. However, you can achieve a greater amount of nutritional ketosis for more prolonged periods of time with these diets. During fasting, you eventually run out of glycogen, and of course you're in ketosis, but you can also achieve this with the ketogenic diet, which is a diet that's very high in fats and low in carbohydrates. And you can achieve this by eating plant fats, such as nuts and seeds and avocado and olives and refined oils, but you can also achieve this with animal products, such as fatty meats, cheese, eggs, and some other things. And of course, you would avoid refined starches and sugars, but you would also avoid other sources of carbohydrates, even healthy foods such as brown rice and sweet potato, because they could very ta quickly take you out of ketosis. Now, achieving ketosis completely changes the metabolism and physiology at the level of the individual cell. So when the body is starved of glucose, it must metabolize fat into glycerol and free fatty acid change, which are in turn metabolized into acetyl-CoA, which then enter the Krebs cycle in the mitochondria. And you can see that as the body doesn't have sufficient glucose, the liver must manufacture only enough glucose to meet the needs of other prioritized organs, and the brain and spinal cord run primarily on ketone bodies from the metabolized fats. And this change in metabolism may have various benefits in multiple sclerosis. Now the effects of ketosis on metabolism are extremely complex, but it's believed that it has a significant effect of the function of the mitochondria and may be neuroprotective. For instance, it's well known that mitochondria, the little energy producing organelles within the cells, are very important in MS and there's evidence of mitochondrial dysfunction related to multiple sclerosis progression and mitochondrial dysfunction may actually precede injury to the axons or nerve fibers, at least in animal models. Also, metabolism in MS can generate reactive oxygen species, which may cause injury to the mitochondrial. There's also evidence in multiple sclerosis of reduced metabolism of glucose in different areas of the brain. So MS may be a disease of impaired glucose metabolism, and using ketone bodies instead of glucose may sort of bypass this problem. Interestingly, there are diseases of the mitochondria that can actually mimic and be similar to multiple sclerosis. For example, the disease Harding's disease disease or Harding syndrome, which is a variation of Leber's hereditary optic neuropathy, can mimic MS. This is a disease that normally causes optic nerve degeneration, but sometimes it can be associated with weakness, fatigue, and even brain lesions that look like MS. And I actually saw one patient in my career who's had so-called Elhan Plus Syndrome, which is actually Harding's disease, and was diagnosed with MS for decades before she was correctly diagnosed with Harding's disease. Furthermore, there's some evidence that ketosis has effects on inflammation. In rats, ketosis can suppress certain inflammatory cytokines, which are cell signaling proteins known to have a role in inflammation in MS. Ketones also open up potassium ATP channels and prevent mitochondrial swelling and cell death so they may be neuroprotective. Next, I'll show a few animal studies related to these diets, and these studies use a rat model of multiple sclerosis called experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis. And in this first study, you're looking at levels of IL-17, or interleukin-17, which is a cytokine involved in immune cell signaling produced by 
uh, TH17 cells, which is, are a subclass of T helper 17 type cells, which are known to be related to inflammation and multiple sclerosis. And they compared the fasting mimicking diet with a controlled diet. And by the way, the fasting mimicking diet wasn't a strict fast. They gave the rats a low amount of calories during the fast, but still achieved nutritional ketosis. And you can see a massive difference in the levels of interleukin 17. So you, these are the control rats, and these are the rats on the fasting mimicking diets a massive difference. They also looked at clinical outcomes. So this is a measure of disability in the rats called the clinical EAE score. And you can see those who received the control diet in black did the worst. Those who received the ketogenic diet did somewhat better. But those who received two variations of the fasting mimicking diet did the best. And the S stands for semi-therapeutic and the T stands for therapeutic. So the S was the less strict form. But interestingly, both groups did about the same, much better than the ketogenic diet and control control groups. They actually tested the same diets in humans with multiple sclerosis. This was a small trial, a pilot trial, 20 versus 20 versus 20, so 20 in each group. And you can see the control subjects did slightly worse in terms of quality of life. They looked at things like fatigue and other aspects of quality of life. The, pe the people who received the fasting mimicking diet did the best, and those who received the ketogenic diet had an intermediate outcome. There are also a few small pilot unrandomized trials showing some benefits in multiple sclerosis. For instance, since this is a study done at Johns Hopkins University, and the senior author was Dr. Ellen Mowry, pictured to the right. And this study had 16 patients taking Tysabri, and they actually got to choose either continuous calorie restriction or intermittent calorie restriction. And the idea here was that if you let people choose, they may be more compliant with the diet. Now, seen in blue is the logged study days, and as you can see, not everyone was so compliant. However, you can see in the dark line the average change in weight, and on average, people did lose weight and also the dotted line is change in fatigue and you can see that most people had reduced fatigue as well. There was another study done by Dr. Myla Goldman at the University of Virginia on the ketogenic diet in relapsing remitting MS, 19 patients, and she showed a reduction in fatigue over six months, along with a decrease in depression measured by the Beck Depression Inventory Score. There was also a slight improvement in overall disability measured by the EDSS, or Expanded Disability Status Score, and this was driven by improvements in bowel bladder function, sensation, and function in the right upper extremity, or the dominant hand based on the nine hole peg test. However, there was no improvement in walking ability or in cognitive function. And of course, the data are very limited because this was not a randomized trial and there was no control group. I should also mention the research of Dr. Terry Walls, who is the author of the very popular book, The Walls Protocol. And I have a separate video summarizing the recommendations in this book if you'd like to take a look. Now, for those who don't know, Dr. Walls is a physician who claims to have reversed her secondary progressive multiple sclerosis with a modified paleo diet along with other interventions. And you can see her pictured in 2017 in a tilt recline wheelchair and then in 2008 riding a bicycle. Now, she does have various studies on this topic. One was in progressive multiple sclerosis, and this study did various things. It wasn't just a dietary study. She also recommended supplements, stretching, exercise, functional electrical stimulation, stress management, and toxin removal. However, she was able to demonstrate a reduction in fatigue based on the fatigue status scale over a 12-month period. Again, this study involved many things other than diet, so it's hard to say this was just related to diet. I should also say that in her book, she recommends three different diets, and only the strictest version of the diet, the Walls Paleo Plus, could be considered a ketogenic diet. And if you want to learn more about those three diets, again, you can take a look at that separate video. So the overall evidence strongly supports the idea that the ketogenic diet and fasting mimicking diets or intermittent fasting are beneficial both for weight loss and managing certain symptoms in MS, in particular fatigue, which is one of the most common and disabling symptoms of MS. However, I have to say the data is lacking in terms of so-called harder outcomes in MS, such as benefits in reducing new lesions or reducing disability and relapses in MS. However, the good news is we are likely to get high quality data on this topic in the near future because there is an ongoing study in Germany that is a randomized larger trial over a longer period of time. And this study has 111 participants and is over 18 months and is ongoing. And in the study, they have three groups. One is a ketogenic diet group where they initially give people less than 20 grams of carbs per day, but slowly increase it between 20 to 40 grams per day after the induction of four weeks. 
Group B is a fasting group where they have a seven day fast every six months. And during those seven days, people are only allowed to eat vegetable juice and vegetable broth, totaling about 200 to 350 calories per day, along with a daily 14 hour fast. And the third group is a standard diet, which is fat modified. And the primary outcome is new T2 MRI lesions, but they're looking at many secondary outcomes, including relapses, safety, disability progression, fatigue, depression, cognition, quality of life, inflammatory markers, and the gut microbiome. So right now, I would say that in terms of treating the underlying disease MS, the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting is not fully proven, but we may find out new data in the near future, and I'll definitely report it here. And I'd like to know, have you tried the ketogenic diet? Have you tried intermittent fasting? And what are your results? And do you have any suggestions for future videos?